Welcome to our fun and friendly guide on the Fibonacci series. What's the Fibonacci series? It's like a game with numbers where each new number is made by adding up the two before it. Let's play this number game together. We start with 0 and 1. Now let's add those up. 0 plus 1 is 1. We'll put that next in line. Next, we add the last two numbers again. So, 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's write that down. We keep going. 1 plus 2 is 3. Then 2 plus 3 is 5. See what's happening? We just keep adding the last two numbers to get the next one. You can keep going as long as you want. First things first, we need a function to play with. We start with a function named Fibonacci that takes one parameter, n. This function will calculate the nth number in the Fibonacci series. Inside our function, the first thing we encounter is an if statement. This is our base case. It checks if n is less than 2. But if n is greater than 1, we move to the else part where the real magic happens. Here, we call our Fibonacci function twice, once with n minus 1 and once with n minus 2 and add the results together. This is recursion, where a function calls itself with new arguments. Now, let's see this function in action. Step 1, we call the Fibonacci function with n equals 4. What happens now? Fibonacci 4 hops onto the call stack. Think of the call stack as a stack of plates. You can only take the top plate off to wash it. Similarly, our function sits on top, waiting its turn to run. On the left side, we show the tree view of call stack. Since 4 is not less than 2, the function doesn't return immediately. It needs to calculate two more Fibonacci numbers, Fibonacci 3 and Fibonacci 2. So the next step is we call Fibonacci 3. So Fibonacci 3 goes onto the stack on top of Fibonacci 4. Remember, Fibonacci 4 can't finish until Fibonacci 3 and Fibonacci 2 are done. And Fibonacci 3 can't wrap up until Fibonacci 2 and Fibonacci 1 return their values. Now, it's time to see what happens with Fibonacci 3. We need to calculate Fibonacci 3. This is the next plate on our call stack, sitting right above Fibonacci 4. Just like before, Fibonacci 3 is not less than 2, so it doesn't return immediately. It needs to calculate Fibonacci 2 and Fibonacci 1. So, next, call Fibonacci 2 and gets added to the call stack above Fibonacci 3. You can see Fibonacci 2 gets added in the tree view. Now, we will calculate Fibonacci 2. Since Fibonacci 2 is not less than 2, it doesn't meet our base case criteria, so our function will proceed to the else part of the conditional. Here, the function will need to calculate the sum of Fibonacci 1 and Fibonacci 0. First, we call Fibonacci 1 and add it to the call stack. This call is placed on top of Fibonacci 2 within the stack. Simultaneously, it's also represented in our visual aid, appearing on the left side of the tree view illustrating how the recursive calls branch out. Continuing our exploration of the Fibonacci sequence, we call Fibonacci 1. This is one of the simplest operations in our sequence as Fibonacci 1 is a base case. The function checks if the number is less than 2 and since 1 fits this condition, it just returns 1. No additional calls are needed and Fibonacci 1 does not add further complexity to the call stack. It's fetched from the top of the stack, processes quickly, and then the stack moves on to the next item. In terms of our left tree representation, Fibonacci 1 is a leaf node, indicating that our exploration of this branch is complete. Having calculated Fibonacci 1, the call stack now moves back to Fibonacci 2, where we have the result of Fibonacci 1 already determined. The next step in evaluating Fibonacci 2 is to find the value of Fibonacci 0. We call Fibonacci 0 and add it to the call stack. Fibonacci 0 is another base case in our Fibonacci function. When we call Fibonacci 0, the function recognizes that 0 is less than 2 and returns 0 immediately as specified by our base condition. With Fibonacci 0 quickly evaluated, we now have both values we need to compute Fibonacci 2. We combine the result of Fibonacci 1, which is 1, with Fibonacci 0, which is 0. The sum of these two numbers, 1 plus 0, gives us the final result for Fibonacci 2, which is 1. On our left tree representation, Fibonacci 0 would appear as a leaf node, just like Fibonacci 1. It does not branch any further, and with its evaluation, we fully explored the branch starting from Fibonacci 2. With Fibonacci 2 now calculated for the process of determining Fibonacci 3, we must calculate the right part of the recursive calls, which is Fibonacci 1. 
When we call Fibonacci 1, it is added to the call stack. Since Fibonacci 1 is a base case in the Fibonacci sequence, this calculation is immediate. It returns 1 without further recursion. This call is added to the call stack, but it resolves instantly and is removed as there are no additional operations to perform. With Fibonacci 1 calculated, we have all the parts needed to compute Fibonacci 3. The value of Fibonacci 3 is the sum of Fibonacci 2 and Fibonacci 1. Fibonacci 3 is 1 plus 1, which equals 2. Then Fibonacci 3 is removed from the call stack. After computing the left part of Fibonacci 4, which is Fibonacci 3, we now need to address the other part required to complete our calculation, Fibonacci 2. When we call Fibonacci 2, we add it to the call stack. This isn't the first time we've called Fibonacci 2 in our sequence of operations. As Fibonacci 2 is not less than 2, the function needs to calculate Fibonacci 1 and Fibonacci 0 to determine its value. When we call Fibonacci 1, this operation is added to the call stack. Fibonacci 1 is a base case in the Fibonacci function, which means it will return the value 1 immediately without any further recursive calls. This value is quickly resolved and popped from the call stack. Next, the computation of Fibonacci 2 requires the evaluation of Fibonacci 0. This function call is placed on top of the call stack, indicating that it is the current operation to be addressed. Fibonacci 0 is recognized as a base case within the definition of the Fibonacci sequence. According to the base case conditions, when the input is 0, the function returns 0 without the need for further recursion. These two results, from Fibonacci 1 and Fibonacci 0, are then added together to give us the final value for Fibonacci 2, which equals 1. With this result, the call to Fibonacci 2 has completed its task and is also removed from the call stack. Now, with Fibonacci 2 evaluated, we can proceed to complete the calculation of Fibonacci 4. As previously mentioned, Fibonacci 4 is the sum of Fibonacci 3 and Fibonacci 2, which is 3. And we remove the Fibonacci 4 from the call stack. And that wraps up our journey through the enchanting world of the Fibonacci series. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more adventures into the fascinating realm of numbers and patterns. Until next time, keep finding the Fibonacci in the world around you.